Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be about leopard geckos and their care. They are one of the most commonly kept reptiles and because of that they are also one of the most commonly abused. So today I'm going over how to care for them properly. There's just so much to cover. If this video does get a little lengthy I apologize for that but I'm going to try my best to keep it somewhat short if possible. So now I'm going to go into some general information about leopard geckos. They're medium-sized geckos. They're uh, fairly large. They can get up to 10 inches, but most of the time they'll only stay from 6 to 8. And you should be able to see right in there. Their tails are really fat. They store fat in their tails, that is, if they're fed enough. And um, they're kind of bulky in general. But because of my improper care for the first year of Sushi here's life, um, she's not as fat as she should be, but she's getting there. She may wake up and come out later. Sometimes they do wake up during the day, but for the most part they sleep. And uh, something else that I really, really, really love about them is they pick one spot, one corner, to poop in. So all these white particles you see throughout here, those are called urates. That is the white solid part of their poop that it really doesn't break down in a bioactive setup like this. The main part does, but uh, the rest doesn't really break down that well. So it is kind of an issue. So you may have to remove the urates if you do have a bioactive setup like this, but for the most part, it will break down naturally on its own with just the bugs in here. Leopard geckos can live anywhere from 15 to 20 to 30 years. It all depends on their care and genetics. They can have shorter lifespans if they are too inbred. And it looks like Sushi's awake. Looky there. And due to a lot of the breeding for morphs in captivity, which is basically just color patterns, um, they are inbred a lot to get that result that the breeders want. So they may not live as long. So now on to substrates. A lot of people will use paper towel, which is fine. You can use paper towel. You can also use big rolls of unprinted newspaper. You can buy them in bulk and use newspaper like that. Um, you can also use slate or tile from certain stores. And you can use EcoEarth, which is a reptile substrate, which can be bought at probably a PetSmart or Petco in your area if you have one. You can also use reptile carpet, but I really, really must advise against it. Their teeth and claws can get stuck in it, and I have used reptile carpet and I've seen this happen. Their teeth will get trapped in it and it will take them a few minutes to get free, and they can lose claws because of it if their claws get stuck. So I must advise against it, but people have used it with success in the past, so I know that it can possibly be done, but it's too risky in my opinion. So it's one of those things that's just up to you. So while I advised against reptile carpet, I must warn against sand. You can often buy sand at PetSmart and Petco. Um, it is pretty cheap for bags of the red or blue or whatever other colors they come in. But these sands are all dangerous, and especially the calcium sand, which they say is digestible. Leopard geckos are known to lick calcium. If they, if they are needing it, they will lick it up. And because of that, it will build up in their system and cause impaction, which basically just means a block in their digestive tract. And they won't be able to go to the bathroom, and they will eventually die from toxification of their body. So I must warn against that. Sand is very dangerous. Please, please, please do not use it. If you already do, it is easy to just move your leopard gecko out of the tank, dump the tank, and then get a safer substrate. My preferred substrate is a mix of 60% play sand with 40% uh, organic soil. Now I know you heard me just now say that sand is bad, but when in a mix, play sand, not just the regular uh, reptile sands, but play sand is safe in a mix. You probably won't be able to see it that well. You can see my phone even better. So that's the mix I use for this bioactive setup. It allows for plant growth. As you can see, I've had this uh, aloe vera and these other succulents r scattered around. I've had them since my last video that I made about my leopard gecko, which was the bioactive setup. 
And if you haven't seen that, there's a link in the description. You should go check it out. And they need a water dish as well. A little off topic of what I was saying, but I decided I would go ahead and talk about this now. And as you can see under there, there are little tiny white bugs crawling around all over the place. Because underneath the water dish, in a bioactive setup, there will be springtails and usually isopods, but I don't see any under here right there. And that's where they like to hang out is under the water dish where it's humid because they do need a lot of moisture to survive. And then under this hide as well, I normally see isopods under here. And there they are. And sometimes springtails, but I don't see any springtails at the moment. And this isn't necessarily a care requirement, but I keep the poop corner moist so the springtails and isopods can survive and stay over there and break down the poop because that's where she always goes. And I have plants in here, which plants are not necessary for bioactive setups, but there is honestly no reason not to put plants in. Um, unless you just don't want any light, but it, it just looks nicer. You have to admit, it does look nicer with the light on it, and the plants really, really add to the aesthetic. I like real plants versus fake ones. Um, the fake ones just don't do it for me. They're just not as pretty or genuine. You can always tell they're fake. If they looked like real plants, I probably wouldn't mind as much, but I do prefer real plants. And I would recommend trying them if you have a bioactive setup. So with plants like aloe vera, they often grow up to the top. And as you can see, that one leaf is just a little bit taller than the tank. So I'm just going to clip it. Um, you can remove the clippings on plants if they do need to be clipped. But there really isn't a reason to. Your cleanup crew will help break that down for you anyway. I mentioned the humid hide earlier. And there should be some type of moss. I used sphagnum moss inside of mine. That will stay moist, and whenever your leopard gecko is shedding, they will oftentimes stay in there for hours at a time. That basically helps their skin soak up the moisture and fall off when it's supposed to. And they definitely will use it, and it is a care requirement. You must have it. If you do not have it, their toes will fall off. Um, I know this from experience. Uh, Sushi here is missing a few of her front toes, unfortunately, and she's awake now. Maybe she'll come out later where you can see them, but a couple of her front toes are gone. Her back toes are all in order, luckily, and still where they belong. Um, I've heard that they can regenerate. I just don't know for sure if they can, so I guess we'll have to see. They don't need any lighting at all, but um, there must be some light, like a room light, that helps them to differentiate between their day and night. Because if they get their cycles all messed up, that could be a pretty big problem for their health. You can use UVA and UVB lighting on their cage, but you must make sure that whatever you dust their food with, supplement-wise, does not contain D3. I do not use UVA or UVB, so I have to dust with a supplement that contains D3. Normally, you would have to use um, three different types of supplements when dusting their food. And I will go over the dusting schedule for that in a minute. But if you buy Rapashi Calcium Plus, which is this product, go ahead and hold it in the light. You may get a good picture if you want to find it somewhere. And that is an all-in-one supplement. So you dust every feeding with this, and you don't have to remember the complicated dusting schedules for the other supplements anymore, which has really, 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 really made a huge improvement in the amount of struggle that I have to go through. It is so much easier now, and I'm not sponsored by Rapashi, but I really do recommend this product. It's great. So if you don't have Rapashi Calcium Plus, you will have to dust with calcium with D3 every other feeding, and you will dust with multivitamins every, every third feeding, I believe. And... Only one of those can contain D3, so multivitamins either will contain D3 or the calcium will. They can't both have it. Babies and young geckos should be eating every day. For juveniles, every two days, and then for adults, every three days. You can feed them doobie roaches or crickets as the main diet, or if you live in some other countries, you can 
you could feed them locusts as well. But in captivity, they need to be eating mainly dubias or mainly crickets for their health. Superworms and mealworms have hard exoskeletons, which are hard to digest, and they're also pretty fat-filled, which um, you, you can get your gecko obese, but the hard exoskeletons can also make, give them impaction, which is another big problem. However, if your gecko is on the skinny side, you can use mealworms and superworms to help fatten them up. Just make sure you don't feed too many as the risk of impaction is still there. So now that sushi is fully awake, I'm going to go to handling. If they are asleep, do not wake them up. Do not bother them. Let them sleep. Um, how would you feel if someone came in there and grabbed you in the middle of the night while you were sleeping? <laughs> so um, if they are awake, you can remove the hide that they are under. And I don't know if I can do this with one hand. She's not great with coming to my hand. But hopefully I can get her. Just need to kind of grab them. There we go. Now it's a lot easier with, one, with two hands, but with one hand is okay. And they're pretty tame. Um, if That is if you worked with them and hold them somewhat frequently. And they're really good with handling. They just kind of sit there or walk. She usually walks more often than not. And there you can see the chunky tail that I mentioned earlier. Now I must stress that you do not use sushi here as an example of how fat your gecko should be. Um, she is a little bit underweight still uh, as far as her legs are concerned. Her tail looks pretty good now. Um, so if your leopard gecko is this skinny, it is okay, but just make sure you keep feeding her or him to make sure that he or she gets back to their normal fat selves like they're supposed to be. They can drop their tails, so you want to make sure not to squeeze their tail when you're holding them. And Sushi here has dropped her tail before, not under my care, but she lost it uh, at PetSmart where I bought her from. And at the time, I did not know how bad PetSmart and Petco were whenever I bought her, so now I know not to buy from them and you should not buy from them, but I did, and she was missing part of her tail, and you can see where the color changes. That is where she lost it. It fully regenerated now, but it took um, probably six months or more before it came back to its full size. You can handle them daily for about 15 to 30 minutes, but if they show signs of stress and they do not want to come out, do not take them out anyway. Let them let them do what they do, respect their needs. So if you want to handle them and they do not want to be handled, don't handle them. The area around the heating pad should be 87 to 90 degrees. And that is anywhere above the heating pad. So right here, under this hide, under this hide, and this general area right there. And then the cool side should be anywhere from 73 to 79. Certain times of the year, it is possible for them to basically stop eating food and get off of their food completely. <clears throat> and just the main thing is to make sure that w during this period, they're not losing too much weight. As long as they're not losing weight, they are fine. But once they start losing weight, you need to make sure that there's not a serious problem. Because if they are losing weight, that could mean a vet visit is in order. So now on to feeding. I breed my own doobie roaches, and that is what I feed mainly, but I do occasionally offer other food for variation in their diet. Variety is always key for any reptile. So I will take this egg carton here, but I don't see any on this side. There are lots of babies on this side. So I generally feed her the babies because they are a good size, and um, they are not part of my breeding population anyway. So I'm just going to tap some babies into the bowl that I have set up here. We've got a few, but that's not quite enough. And I'm going to let the bigger ones out back into the colony because the bigger ones are a lot closer to maturity and I want them to survive so they can breed later. So here are the babies that I have ready for feeding. Um, I had to kill the camera because I needed two hands. But I'm going to dust them with 
Pashy Calcium Plus, like I showed earlier. And I'm going to leave them in her pan in this bowl for about 15 minutes. Once I thoroughly coat all of them with the powder, I'm going to leave them in there for just about 15 minutes. Give her enough time to eat all that she wants. And I dropped a couple here. pick them up and put them back like that so I may need a little more dust but that's probably good so I leave the bowl in there and let her go at it I offer more than what she'll be able to eat and just let her eat for 15 minutes and then when she's done she'll go back in her hide and I will take them back out She's not done yet, just sometimes she walks away before she's completely finished. She'll come back out in just a moment and keep eating. I forgot to mention this earlier, but the water in the water dish should be replaced daily because bacteria can grow in as little as 12 hours. And the water that you use also needs to be dechlorinated, either with something like Reptisafe or um, Aquasafe even. You can also use uh, natural spring water. Humidity should stay around 50 to 55 percent or um, even 45 maybe to 50. It is really controversial, but looking at the humidities in their region of origin, it pretty much stays anywhere from 45 to 60. So it is best to keep it in that range, probably lower than 60 just to be on the safe side. If the humidity is too high for too long, they can get what's called an upper respiratory infection which is a pretty serious issue, so just make sure if your humidity does spike for some reason, um, be sure to keep an eye out for wheezing or any weird noises that the gecko makes, because usually they will be silent if they're happy, um, but sometimes they will chirp, and the chirping can be a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing, so it's just one of those things that's kind of hard to explain, but it is something you should be concerned about. They have vocal cords. Uh, they can scream pretty loud, uh, at least as babies they can, and they can chirp, which is a way of communication most likely. They cannot be housed together. So this is something that a lot of people support this idea of keeping two females together. No. <laughs> Ultimately, the main reason why they can't be is because they are just solitary, naturally. So all it's going to do if you house two together is cause stress. That's the only possible outcome. So your geckos will be stressed. They will eventually fight, and whether you see it or not, they probably already have. And um, if they are laying on top of each other or quote-unquote cuddling, that is trying to establish dominance, which is, which is worse. <laughs> For measuring your temperature and humidity, you will need a digital thermometer and hygrometer. The gauges, like this one back here, are not accurate, but I have both. I have gauges and the digital ones. And um, from what I can tell, the gauge ones just don't work. So you should probably just stick with the digital ones just to be safe. And um, hopefully your temperatures will stay nice and good for you. The minimum tank size for a baby or juvenile is 10 gallons. But for an adult, the minimum tank size is a 20 gallon like this one. And sushi may not be adult size just yet. Oh, honey, hold on. She's trying to eat them from underneath the bowl. There we go. So the minimum tank size for an adult is a 20-gallon long, like sushi is in here. The tank must be more horizontal than it is vertical. Because, like, this tank is um, it's not very wide and it's very tall. This one should be exactly the opposite because these are terrestrial geckos. But they do like climbing, so climbing opportunities are always good. And I've been considering putting some branches throughout just for her to climb more. She's going back at the food again. It's been about 15 minutes, so even though she's not completely done yet, I'm going to go ahead and take it out because I don't want her to eat too much. 
So I know I haven't covered everything there is to know, but hopefully I've covered quite a bit of it and I've got the basic care at least. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you like my channel, please share it with your friends. I'd really appreciate that. And um, good news, I think I have fixed the issue with my upload time, so I should be able to upload videos that are considerably longer, like this one, from now on.